Hi everyone, we're going to uh, build a Luke's encrypted uh, volume today and configure it to auto mounted boot. Um, something I don't normally do, uh, so I thought it would be helpful to, uh, to build a video uh, just to be able to refresh on doing this stuff. Uh, personal notes. I hope this helps somebody else. Um, so right now our Red Hat 6 box is booting up. Um, we're going to have to uh, poke around, uh, find, find a free partition, uh, create it, format it for Luke's. Um, I get a diagram here. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to build a dev stb one. Uh, that's going to be Luke's file system. And in that container, once it's opened, we can build this uh, file system, ext, xfs, etc. So let's go back to the system. Our system is booted up. Um, I'm going to log in both on the terminal and get an X window manager. Uh, so the first thing we can do here, uh, one of the easier things to do is just to run uh, dmessage grep sd. That's, this is, what this is going to do is give us all the debug messaging on the SCSI module. Every time a disk event occurs or a drive gets attached, it spits out a message in here. So that w what this is good for is this lets us know that our current drives in the system are SDA, B, C, D, E, and F, and so forth. Um, so that way when we go to block ID, we know that we're seeing what we should see and nothing's missing. So here's, here's a perfect example. Um, if I do a block ID, because we're not using any volumes on dev SDB, we're not going to see dev SDB here. So block ID is nice because it lets you know what you have mounted and usable and unmounted, but it doesn't tell you what's there. So by doing D message grep SD, we can see that we have an SDB and an SDD. Another way to do this is we can do we can use the disk utility. And here we go. Dev SDB is a two gig drive. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll go to F disk and we'll we'll set that up. Um, okay. So here we're going to do F disk minus C. Oh, well, first of all, I know we have to use the C switch. Let's find out why. Man F disk. C. Switch off DOS compatibility mode. Okay. And it's recommended. That's why we need to do that. F disk. C. Dev SDB. So we're going to do P to print. Uh, we don't have anything there. So we're going to build a new partition. New. Primary. One. Max size. Enter, enter. We're going to print the table again. All right. We're going to write the table. Part probe. And now if we do a block ID, we have our file system. Um, so at this point, what you would want to do is um, you want to make sure that you have the uh, crypt setup utilities installed. Um, an easy way to do that is Yum's got a, a built-in uh, search tool called what provides. So let's just say um, that, that's usually how I remember what packages need to get installed. Yeah, if you just do yum what provides crypt setup, uh, that'll tell you what package to install. All right, so we've already got it installed, but obviously if it wasn't, you would know what you need to do. Um, after the package is installed, all dependencies will be wrapped up in that too. Um, one of the important things you need to do is make sure that DM crypt is running. 
Uh, so you can do lsmod grep crypt. Uh, looks like DM crypt isn't running because we don't have any mounted volumes. If you do auto mount, the uh, DM crypt automatically uh, loads it boot. We'll do a mod probe DM crypt. And now we have our modules loaded. Uh, another thing we can do is mod probe minus I, and that will install it to automatically load uh, during boot. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not really a necessary step. It's better to remember to just mod probe DM crypt whenever you need to mount a volume. Uh, so now we're going to do a uh, crypt setup. Luke's format dev stb1. All right, it's a lowercase l. Sorry about that. Crypt setup. All right, now to format the volume, you have to type yes, uppercase, uh, and you have to put a password on the volume. So in my example here, I'm going to use pass wd fs. Pass wd fs. Let's do a crypt setup. Luke's open dev sdb1. Let's just call it crypt vol1. Enter the password pass wdfs. All right, so now we have our uh, crypt volume mounted. So what we have, so now we have an unformatted volume that we can store data in. Um, so from here, we would want to build a mount point and uh, mount the uh, crypt volume. So let's uh, make our crypt mount. And now we can do uh, MKFS EXT4 dev mapper crypt vol because this would be just like if we were formatting a dev SDA partition, uh, same same concept. All right, so now we get a file system on there, so we can do a mount TXT4 dev mapper crypt to mount crypt mount. So if we go to mount crypt mount, we can touch foo, echo high to foo, echo, uh, cat foo. So we can read and write to the file system. Everything works great. Now that most of the work's done, uh, all we need to do is uh, you mount dev uh, mount crypt mount crypt setup Luke's close crypt vol one. So now we've closed the encrypted volume and we've unmounted the file system. How do we make this thing mount on boot? That's the worst part. So. Uh, Usually under Etsy, uh, what I do is I just build a, I just build a file called Luke's.key, and I put a, a word in it. Now, if you read the Red Hat documentation, what it says is to just echo uh, password. Just echo the password into the file. And in order for this file uh, 
in order for this file to work properly, you have to echo it because you can't have a return line. If you have a return line, then it won't read the password properly. Um, another important factor here is make sure you chmod 400 Luke's key on the permissions. It, it won't auto mount on boot. Okay, so um, I've, I've left a couple of cheater notes here just to make this process a little smoother. Um, but based on how this mounts, uh, we had to do a crypt setup open and then we had to mount the file system. So there's another file, uh, and this file is called uh, Cryptab. And in Cryptab, uh, we have our auto mounts for the volume. Um, so commenting, I mean, hashtag the file, I would highly recommend putting in exactly what I put here. Just so if you ever have to jump in here and something's broken, you know how to fix it right away and you're not you're not digging and researching. Um, so, you know, I put a hashtag dev mapper name device uh, and then, you know, to put a password file in. So we have our loops key. Um, our device is dev sdb1 and we're going to change the name here. So we're going to put it as uh, crypt. vol one was what we used. It can be whatever you want. Um, you know, it's just it's just a dev mapper name. All right, quit. All right, so now we have our crypt vol. So let's go into the FS tab. And I did the same thing here. Um, I added a hashtag. We'll just go to the end. I'll add dev mapper crypt vol one crypt mount one. And if we remember correctly, it was ext4 defaults zero zero. So let's uh. Let's reboot and see what happens. All right, we have an error here. It says mounting file system device dev mapper crypt vol one does not exist. Um, another extremely helpful file is the, uh, the, the Verilog boot log. So we can go back here and we can see that um, our special device, DevMapper Crypt Vol 1, does not exist. So we know that we need to work on that. There's, there's something, something's not right. So let's go back and look at our Crypt tab. We have our Crypt Vol 1, DevSDB 1. And our Etsy loops key. All right, we're able to mount it. So something else may be going on here. Um, all right, so we have uh, Dev Mapper Crypt Vault One is what we have in the FS tab. Crypt Vault 1 is what we have in the Crypt tab.
All right, DM crip is loaded. I'm back in after not even a minute of uh, reviewing. I, I realized I, I made the mistake I warned you about. So we used Echo uh, to um, to make the Luke's key file. Um, and if you notice here, it doesn't do the return line. Now when you use Echo, if we uh, if we do man Echo, the first option it has is do not output the trailing new line. Um, so Right after I stopped the video, what I did is I, I figured it was echo or, or something I did. So I did a printf password fs, and I redirected it to Etsy Luke's key. Uh, I did a reboot. Everything came up great. Um, just to show you, we'll do a cat. So as you can see here, um, I think there's a bug in the padlock SHA. Um, that's not a big deal. It ended up being the password all along. So just, just remember when, when you build that password file to use printf or echo space minus n, uh, and you'll be all set. And that's really all there is to, uh, setting up a volume. So I hope this was helpful and, uh,